Hello and welcome to my channel, I went to lose gaming. In today's video, we'll be taking a look at an extensive and comprehensive Oni guide to the brand new Bonkers character, Arataki Ito. So you may have noticed that this isn't my usual cracked account. And if you're curious about this, I'm sure someone in the comments section below will have an explanation for this. But as you can see from his build, it is extremely poor. The artifacts are t absolutely terrible. Um, however, I was able to use this opportunity to confirm all my theory crafting, as well as my math and stats and mechanics and such. So still, I'm very confident in the contents of this guide. Now, Arataki Ito's kit is surprisingly complex and convoluted for the Unga Bunga character that he is. So instead of just starting with his skills, I wanted to zoom out a bit to take a look at a more macro perspective of his kit. So Ito is a burst based bruiser character and once he uses his elemental burst, he's infused with Geo and does some serious Geo damage. Now Ito wants to build superlative super strength stacks which is indicated by a shield thing on his back, which I'll demonstrate in a bit. And then he wants to use those stacks to perform the Arataki Kesagiri combo, which is composed of upward slashes followed by a slam. Essentially, his entire kit revolves around building superlative super strength stacks or SSS stacks as I'll be calling them frequently, and then finally dumping those superlative super strength stacks into the Arataki Kesigiri combo. So now that we have an understanding of his overall kit, let's dive into the nitty gritty of his entire kit, and we'll start with his normal attack fight club legend, which consists of a four hit combo, where he stylishly kicks and slams his claymore into the ground, Now one really important thing about his normal attack, at least while his burst is not active, is that the second and fourth strike, when they hit an opponent, will each gain one or two stacks of superlative super strength respectively. So that means if you do the full four hit combo, you will gain three stacks of superlative super strength. So the second hit gains part of the shield, and the third hit gains two more parts of the shield. And at five hits, you can see the shield do a really big flash, which indicates that you have all five stacks of superlative super strength. So a couple other notes about the building stacks for the superlative super strength is that it does work against abyss mage shields and abyss Elector shields. And finally, it also builds stacks against invincible enemies like the Magu Kenki while it's getting up. Next, let's talk about his charge attack. And we'll start with if you don't have any stacks of the superlative super strength and that is called the saichi manji slash damage sorry i don't know how to pronounce japanese very well but anyway when you press and hold he does the standard silly claymore ending slash that you know characters like deluke have however when you do have superlative super strength stacks you will consume those stacks in order to do the arataki kesagiri combo by simply pressing and holding the left mouse button and for all but the last stacks, you will do the slash portion. And then for the last stack of your superlative super strength, you will do the slam or the final slash version. So it's very clear just simply from looking at the multipliers as well as seeing how fast he slashes with the you know superlative super strength, the Arataki Kesagiri, that is his best DPS option. And next, his two passives, the first one being the Arataki Ichiban and the second one being the Bloodline of Crimson Oni, both increase the Arataki Kesagiri's damage. The Arataki Ichiban increases the attack speed, so I guess it doesn't increase the damage itself, but you know, it increases the damage output because each consecutive strike following the previous one gains 10% attack speed for up to 30% attack speed. So you'll notice that after the third slash, you'll start hitting a lot quicker. And finally, this one adds 35% of Arataki Ito's defense as flat damage to the Arataki Kesagiri's slashing and final slashes damage. It is affected by crit as well as bonus damage like geo damage and other sources of bonus damage. 
enemy defense, and finally, enemy resistances. We're still not done talking about his normal attack because the next mechanic to talk about is that his normal attacks keep the place in the combo if you dash cancel or use his um, elemental skill in the middle of his combo. So for example, this is his normal four hit combo. But if you dash right there, I dashed in the second hit and you can see the third and fourth hit came out. If you dash during the first hit, second, third, and then fourth hits will come out. If you dash during the first hit, dash during the third hit, you'll see that the second, third, and then the fourth hit still came out. You can also use his elemental skill. So you could do one hit, elemental skill, second hit, and in that case it didn't conserve it. Not sure why, but the first hit of his um, normal attack string sometimes doesn't cancel properly. And I haven't really quite figured out why that's the case. But let's say you do this, second hit, E, third hit, dash cancel, and you can see how he is still continuing the normal attack combo during that entire, you know, set of dash cancels as well as his elemental skill. So in particular, that is really useful for repositioning without losing the potential of getting two stacks from the fourth hit of his normal attack combo. Okay, we can finally move on to the next thing in his kit, which is his um, elemental skill, the Matsetsu Zetsugi Akaushi Burst. Not to be confused with his actual elemental burst, um, this is just the name of his elemental skill. Anyway, his elemental skill tosses out this little cow named Ushi, or I guess he's a bull. And he taunts enemies as well as provides three different ways of providing Ito superlative super strength stacks. The first way he provides stacks is upon impact when you toss him out. There, you can see that Ito gained a stack. The second way is when Ushi takes damage. You can see that I gained another stack. And the third way is when Ushi times out. You can see now that the shield is at three stacks. Um, one from tossing him out, one from him getting hit, and finally one from him timing out. And thus Ito is now at three stacks of superlative super strength. Now one more detail about his Ushi building up stacks is that when he takes damage, one stack can be gained every two seconds. So, you know, the method of Ushi adding a stack when it takes damage has a cooldown of two seconds. Finally, it's worth noting that Arataki Ito's elemental skill generates, I believe, three to four geoparticles, has a 10 second cooldown and a six second duration, as well as inherits 100% of Arataki Ito's hit points. And finally, this is the largest skill multiplier in Arataki Ito's entire kit. Another interesting thing to note about Ushi is that you can toss it out pretty much any time, whether it's during his normal attacks or even during his Kesagiri charge attacks. And lastly, it counts towards the standard 3 Geo structure count. As we can see in this clip, it's destroying one of uh, the Geo ballish like shaped object that the Traveler creates. All right, we can finally move on to the big bad of his kit, his elemental burst, the Royal Descent. Behold, Ito the Evil, which is anything but demonstrating how evil Ito actually is as he enjoys catching bugs and playing with kids. But besides that, he does an awesome animation, infuses his basic attacks with geo damage, and takes a percent of his defense and adds it onto his attack stat. So once you level this thing up to level nine, it should be close to a one to one defense to attack conversion. And a well-built Ito can expect to have around 3000 to 5000 attack. And his burst lasts 11 seconds with an 18 second cooldown, but his burst time duration starts after his animation ends. So in reality, his downtime is probably somewhere between five and six seconds instead of simply it being 18 minus 11, which would be seven seconds. The next thing to note is that his burst ends when you swap him out. So right now you can see his burst is active as indicated by the giant club. You swap him out, swap him back in, and his burst is no longer active. And the next most basic thing about his burst is that it has 70 energy cost. I actually believe this is the first 70 energy cost burst in the game, but it is quite a lot of energy required um, to activate his burst. But let's also talk about what the burst does for superlative super stacks, super strength stacks. On the first and third strikes of his attack combo, they will each grant Arataki Ito one stack of superlative super strength. So if you remember from earlier, the second and fourth strike of his normal attack 
even without his burst, provide one to two stacks of superlative super strains respectively. So his burst fills in the gap so that his first and third strikes also provide one stack of superlative super strength. So if you do one, two, three, four hits of his normal attack during his burst, you will gain all five stacks of the superlative super strength. And finally, Ito's burst snapshots his defense stats the moment you press Q. That means that additionally gained defense during his burst does not increase his attack stat. This will be very important in the artifacts and weapons section later on. Now, it's also worth noting that if you toss his elemental skill before casting his elemental burst, like this, you will still be able to catch the particles generated from his elemental skill, so that way you have a bit of energy. But now we can finally move on to his build. And as usual, we'll start off with the artifacts. It's clear that the Husk of Opulent Dream seems to have been tailor-made for Arataki Ito. And if we look at this chart, we can see that it is the best in slots source of damage for Arataki Ito for all of the sources of damage, which include charge attacks, normal attacks, as well as his elemental skill. However, it's worth noting that sometimes it can be awkward to maintain all four stacks. Um, and as mentioned earlier, you know, you may end up not snapshotting some of the additional defense stacks that you may not have at the moment. The next artifact set to talk about is the four piece retracing bolide. The four piece retracing bolide is a very close second place for his charge attacks as well as his normal attacks, but it falls far behind for his elemental skill. However, the Retracing Bolide is still a good and very usable set, as well as providing our Takihito with a beefier shield. And finally, the other sets don't really stand out to me, um, with, for example, the four-piece Gladiators only increasing his normal attack damage, but perhaps the Shima Nao's Reminiscence could have a purpose, although I didn't do the math for it, but I can imagine some of the rotations for it being a little awkward, as well as its buff not lasting the full duration of our Takihito's burst. Now, as for artifacts, when it comes to DPS characters, I think you guys have a pretty good idea of what stats to target, but Arataki Ito is a defense scaling character, so that means you will want a defense percent timepiece, you want a geodamage goblet, you'll want a crit circlet, and you'll want to target the usual 1 to 2 crit ratio. And for substats, your top priorities are, as always, crit rate and crit damage for pretty much any characters. And then your second priority is defense percent. And finally, your third priority is probably energy recharge. And it's worth noting that attack percent, flat defense, and flat attack are not completely wasted, but they provide significantly less gains in damage or utility than the previously mentioned stats. Now let's talk about the weapons for Arataki Ito. Obviously, the weapon that stands out the most is the Red Horn Stone Thresher. I think it's to no one's surprise that the Red Horn Stone Thresher is Arataki Ito's best in slot weapon. Of course, this weapon has a colossal 88.2% crit damage, 542 base attack, and finally, it increases his defense by 28% and normal charge attack damage is increased by 40% of defense. Now, this 40% of defense is also flat damage, very similar to Arataki Ito's second passive, which adds 35% of Arataki Ito's defense to the Arataki Keisugiri. But of course, this the sword provides it for both the normal and charge attacks, and not just to Arataki Ito's um, Arataki Kesagiri, which is you know his charge attacks when he has superlative super strength stacks. Now let's take a look at his arguably best free to play option, the White Blind. The White Blind, as you can see in this chart at Refinement Five, is actually somewhat competitive, doing about 89% of the Red Horn Stone Thresher's damage. But it's really important to note about the white blind is that it can be difficult to get four stacks and then use his burst because in order to do that you have to obviously attack something four times with Arataki Ito and you generally don't want to do that with just his normal attacks right you don't really want to use his normal attacks outside of his burst as such it can lead to some awkward situations where you have zero stacks of the white blinds defense buff stacked but you still gain those four stacks of defense and four stacks of attack, which are reflected in, you know, Arataki's Ito's attack stat from the attack buff, but also from the his uh, passive two, which adds 35% of defense. This does not snapshot, so the white blind will still continue to increase the damage there. But you can see that once the white blind does not snapshot, the weapon is only doing about 81% of the red horn stone thresher. 
So you kind of have to choose, do I use some of Arataki Ito's normal attacks to build stacks first before I use his burst, or do I just, you know, sacrifice some damage around, let's say 10% damage for less ramp up time and in order to just use his burst immediately. The next weapon worth talking about is the Serpent Spine. So the Serpent Spine takes four seconds to build a stack and you can build up to five stacks. So it takes up to 20 seconds to build all five stacks and it provides up to 30 to 50% bonus damage depending on refinements. Now with five stacks as well as four stacks on the Husk of Opulent Dreams, you can see that this weapon is doing nearly as much damage as the Red Hornstone Thresher for its charged attacks. However, if you think about it, it's actually very difficult, if not impossible or very awkward to build both the five stacks on the Serpent Spine as well as the four stacks on the Husk of Opulent Dreams in Abyss. The Serpent Spine requires you to be on field in order to gain those stacks, which you can generally do by having Arataki Ito in the first slot. And then you can wait 20 seconds in Abyss Chamber to gain those five stacks for the Serpent Spine. However, the Husk of Opulent Dreams requires you to be off field for three seconds per stack. So 12 seconds total, you want to be off field. Obviously, these two things are the opposite of each other. If you're on field with Arataki Ito, you do not gain stacks for the Husk of Opulent Dreams. If you're off field with Arataki Ito in Abyss, you do not gain stacks for the Serpent Spine. Um, all the nuances aside, of course, the Serpent Spine is a pretty solid weapon, but I highly, highly recommend a very, very strong shield like Zhongli Shield because otherwise you will lose your stacks on the Serpent Spine while you get hit. Okay, the next weapon to talk about is the Unforged. So I actually think the Unforged is a usable weapon on Arataki Ito because attack is not snapshotted as a stat. Unlike defense, right, when you do Arataki Ito's burst, it snapshots the defense stat, but obviously his attack stat is not snapshotted. So what that means is that the Unforged building its stacks throughout and during his burst has no problem with that and you'll be able to get to five stacks pretty quickly. And of course the Unforged boosts his shield's durability, but in my opinion this option is still worse than both the White Blind as well as the Serpent Spine. The next weapon to talk about is the Wolf's Gravestone. Now interestingly enough, due to the nature of Arataki Ito's damage, which is multiple mid-sized damage numbers hitting the enemy, you will actually surprisingly proc the Wolf's Gravestone buff quite often against, you know, a lot of enemies that you fight. However, whether or not that's, you know, right before the enemy dies and there's nothing else to kill is another story. So as usual, the Wolf's Gravestone's buffs are a bit situational. But here you can see that even a Refinement 5 Wolf's Gravestone with its situational buff active still does less damage than the Red Hornstone Thresher at Refinement 1. Now the next weapon which is actually pretty solid is the Black Cliff Slasher. Now the reason why the Black Cliff Slasher is pretty solid is thanks to its high crit damage substat because our Takito doesn't care as much about base attack. Any sacrifice you can make to base attack to provide damage to one of the other multipliers is welcomed for our Takito. Also, you know, gaining kill stacks brings this weapon up to become competitive to the white blind with all of its stacks active. So yeah, I mean, it's worth considering this weapon if you don't, for example, want to craft the white blind and uh, if you don't have the serpent spine or the red horn stone thresher, let's say you already have a highly refined black cliff slasher, feel free to use that and you'll see some pretty decent results. As for the other weapons, there's really nothing worth talking about, right? You've got the Prototype or Cake, Skyward Pride, perhaps Song of Broken Pines, and the um, Royal Slasher. None of which I really recommend, but the Song of Broken Pines attack speed could be interesting and fun, but you know, it's still not really going to be competitive to the other options. Alright, so next let's move on to his constellations. Now, it's important to note about his constellations that obviously I have not activated them and this account doesn't have any. Take this with a grain of salt. This is all theory crafting and I will likely create a video reviewing his constellations. So be sure to stay tuned for that. But I will give my initial impressions. Starting off with this constellation one, which provides two stacks of superlative super strength upon casting. So with simply um, pressing his Q, tossing Ushi out, and then doing two normal attacks, you will have five stacks of superlative super strength very quickly. And on top of that, it provides one additional stack of SSS every 0.5 seconds for 1.5 seconds. So I believe that provides three additional SSS stacks. I mean, even as a free to play, you could technically get up to 10 stacks of superlative super strength with his constellation one. 
So overall, this is looking to be a very powerful consolation due to reducing the ramp up time as well as providing all the free superlative super strength stacks for Artak Ito. Constellation 2 for Artak Ito will seriously help with his uptime for his elemental burst. And as you can see with every Geo character that's on his team, um, the cooldown gets reduced by 1.5 seconds and 6 energy is restored to Arataki Ito. And let's say you have either 3 or 4 Geo characters on your team. This brings his burst's cost from 70 energy down to 52 energy, which is, you know, a huge reduction in energy cost. And of course, um, the cooldown being reduced will lower his downtime as well. Now, Arataki Ito's Constellation 3 boosts his elemental skill by 3 levels. Unfortunately, this isn't really a great constellation, but you know, it is what it is. Next, we have constellation 4. So constellation 4 adds 20% defense and 20% attack to, I believe, the entire party for 10 seconds after his burst ends. Now, one major utility isn't necessarily for boosting his, you know, teammates damage, but it's actually to boost his own damage for the next Q cycle. So during his second Q, obviously the 10 second duration allows it to be active, especially with Constellation 2 reducing the cooldown. And thus you will have another 20% defense to snapshot for your burst. And finally you'll have 20% attack as well to, you know, um, have for a few seconds while at the beginning of his burst. Next, his Constellation 5 upgrades his burst by 3 levels. This is a very valuable Constellation for him and just roughly increases his damage by 10 to 12%. And finally, his Constellation 6 is the crazy one which adds 70% crit damage to his Arataki Kesagiri's combo's damage. And finally, on top of that, there is a 50% chance that he does not consume a superlative super strength stack, so you could technically just be slashing away the entire duration of his burst. Um, theoretically speaking now that's probably statistically unlikely but you know it, it could happen so it could be pretty cool okay so this guide is looking to be a lot longer than i had hoped but of course i actually was expecting it to be this long because arataki ito is actually quite a complex character next let's talk about arataki ito's teams in order to build a proper team you will need to fulfill geo resonance geo resonance of course is fulfilled by having two geo characters and it provides 15 percent bonus damage as well as decreasing geo resistance by 20 percent when you hit an enemy while you have a shield active so as we can see from this chart geo resonance increases arataki ito's damage by 27 percent so this is not something that you want to skip on and Arataki Ito with Geo Residence will be the baseline for this chart. And everything after this point will be assumed to have Geo Residence as well. And speaking of which, what is after this point? It is other potential teammates that can buff Arataki Ito's damage. And let's start with Bennett. We have two setups here. We have a free to play Bennett that adds 792 attack. We can see here that it adds 21% damage to Arataki Ito. And next, let's say you have a decked out Bennett at Constellation 5 with the Aquila Favonia or Miss Splitters or Forge all at level 90. We can see here that it boosts his damage by 31%. So this is far off from Bennett's usual 60 to 70% damage added to other characters. But, you know, 31% damage is still very formidable on top of all the utility that Bennett adds. For example, he adds obviously a colossal amount of healing. But it's worth noting that Arataki Ito is a melee character and is very mobile. So, you know, he may be a little restricted to Bennett's circle. Next, we have Mona, who's worth pointing out. Mona provides one of the largest damage boosts to Arataki Ito, thanks to the Thrilling Tales, Dragon Slayers, Tenacity of the Millith, or Noblesse, as well as her burst adding 60% bonus damage. Arataki Ito, as a character, has comparatively low geo damage when it comes to his multipliers in comparison to, for example, crit damage, depending on your weapon, as well as constellations or whatever, right? You guys get the point. And especially compared to his attack stat, which he should have 3,000 plus of. Anyway, because Mona increases bonus damage by a lot, we can see Arataki Ito's damage skyrockets by 48%. However, Mona's not necessarily the most recommended outside of, you know, I guess some very specific burst scenarios where you want to kill something as fast as possible because Mona's burst only lasts for six seconds, which, you know, is nowhere near the duration uh, needed for Arataki Ito's entire burst. And next we have Zhongli. Now Zhongli, while he only provides a 13% universal damage increase thanks to the resistance shred as well as the tenacity of the Millilith, Zhongli provides the most reliable, most durable, most easily accessible, and 100% uptime 
Geo Shield in the game. And you know, Geo Resonance is a crucial part of our Ataki Ito's kit, so if you need a super easy and reliable way to maintain Geo Resonance, Zhongli is a great character to use with him. Of course, Zhongli also does a good amount of damage and can petrify as well. Next, we have Goro. Now, Goro is actually a rather complex character. You can actually build him many different ways, either focusing on doing a little bit of extra damage, focusing on boosting his team a little bit more with Noblesse Oblige, focusing on healing at Constellation 4 as an example, or focusing on energy recharge and energy generation with Favonis. You guys get the point. So there's so many different facets to Goro, but I do have many different versions of Goro here. But as we can see here, Goro ranges from an 18% boost with just his elemental skill and with a free to play setup with his E at level 9. And one good thing about this 18% boost when compared to the F2P Bennett's 21% uh, boost is that Goro's boost does not require him to have a burst here. He can just use his E and still provide a formidable 18% boost Arataki Ito's damage. Now, of course, this is with three Geo characters. Now, if you use Goro's Q, he adds another 25% defense, which adds a quite a bit more damage, um, up to 25% damage in this case for you know, this specific uh, damage maximizer Arataki Ito. And of course we have other variations of Goro, but if we go all the way to the top with the max Constellation 6 Goro with the Noblesse Oblige, we can see here that Goro can boost Arataki Ito's damage by up to 45% um, thanks to the crit damage that his Constellation 6 provides. And it's also worth noting that Constellation 4 Goro starts to heal your team, which otherwise could be fairly lacking with an all geo team. The last buffer that I bothered to do calculations for is actually a Freedom Sworn Albedo. With an elemental teammate to proc Crystallize, Albedo is a reliable activator of the Freedom Sworn buff. And with Albedo at Constellation 0 with a Refinement 1 Freedom Sworn, Albedo adds 16% additional damage to Ito. Now at Constellation 6, Albedo with a Refinement 5 Freedom Sworn, assuming you grab the Crystallizes um, from Albedo and whatever, it goes up to a stellar 39%. So now let's talk about actual team comps for Arataki Ito. Now, of course, in order to fulfill Geo Resonance super reliably, Zhongli will be a great option, if not the best option for that. And you can slap in Goro as well as a flexible fourth slot. I mean, this slot could literally be anyone, including another Geo character like Albedo, or you can even use, for example, an animal character like Venti to help group the enemies up. Really, the combinations are surprisingly endless. Or you can even, heck, bring uh, Kokomi. Where is she? For the off-field healing as well as off-field hydro application in order to reliably activate Crystallize, which is the perfect time to talk about Crystallize. If you don't use Zhongli on your team, and let's say you don't have, you know, a very reliable source of shielding, then you will want to consider Crystallize as the option for activating Geo Resonance. Now, okay, you need uh, four teammates right there, Geo Resonance. In this situation, you will need an elemental damage dealer, unless like you're fighting slimes or enemies that you know you can activate crystallize from uh, naturally. So a lot of off-field or even you know Bennett, for example, who applies two pyro gauge on his burst can reliably activate crystallize even a couple times in order for Arataki Ito to maintain geo resonance. Of course, you can even use Raiden, you can use Mona, you can use Rosaria, you can use Kaya, you can use Fischl, you can use pretty much any other elemental character in order to essentially keep some uptime on Crystallize. Now, of course, you do want to be mindful that you do not have healers unless you have Constellation 4 Goro, or you want to, for example, even include Noel as a source of healing as well as a source of shielding um, for Geo Resonance. So, now the whole point about this is that you know you actually do have a lot of options to fulfill the conditions for an Arataki Ito team, which is essentially you'd need some form of consistent shielding. If you have Goro, you should consider strongly you should strongly consider using him. And ideally you want a source of healing. Constellation 4 Goro fulfills it, but you have other sources of healing as well that can provide, you know, that can help provide the other sources that this team requires. All right, that was a ton of stuff for Ito. He's a rather complex character with a playstyle that can either be super simple and straightforward or even Oonga Boonga. And I'm sure as time goes on, we will be finding optimized 
combos and stack building as well as various other ways to optimize his gameplay. Now I will be making a Constellation Zero Ito showcase which will be coming in a few hours after this guide and you will be seeing pretty much everything in this video put into practice. So the rest of the Ito videos I plan to make include a combo video for Arataki Ito, a Constellation review video for Arataki Ito, a C0 DPS showdown between Arataki Ito versus Constellation Zero Xiao, and finally Constellation Six Noel. And later, I'll hopefully do a Constellation Six DPS showdown versus some currently unchosen contestants. And if time permits, I'll also make a Goro guide and a showcase video for Goro as well, but we'll see if I have the time for that. Also, I regularly make Genshin Impact videos, ranging from C0 showcases, DPS showdowns, guide videos, and more. So be sure to smash the subscribe button as it's the best and easiest way for you to support my work. Also, don't forget to like the video and leave a comment for the YouTube algorithm. As always, I appreciate every single one of you. This is I Went to Lose, signing out. And holy cow, this video was long.